So we're going to shift gears a little bit here. And so my project largely focuses on the evolution of multicellularity uh, in bacteria specifically. So titled here, Cellular Differentiation Within an Obligate Multicellular Bacteria. So where I like to start is just generally when we think about the evolution of life on Earth, we can kind of think of it as an increase in complexity and as life continued to evolve. And this is, yes, an oversimplicity, but thinking of it as molecules coming together to form a first cell and eventually getting a multicellular uh, organism and then some, something that looks like the life that we have on Earth today. Uh, if we look at our classic uh, tree of life, where we have different domains of the bacteria, the archaea, and the eukaryotes, generally we tend to think of all the multicellular life forms belonging to the eukarya, and we think of the bacteria and archaea as these simple single-celled organisms. Um, if we look at uh, the tree of life as we know it today, uh, multicellularity actually it can be plotted across the entire uh, tree of life. And so what I'm showing here is the aggre aggregative uh, evolution of multicellularity or a clonal uh, evolution of multicellularity. And we see it present in the bacteria, the archaea, and the eukarya, of course. And so just focusing in on some bacteria that are capable of this, um, these are just some micrographs showing different uh, cyanobacteria that are in those chains up there in the uh, upper left, and then mixobacteria that sporulate an archaea called methanosarcina. Another example is this uh, uh, bacteria called cable bacteria that form these long centimeter long filaments and can actually move electrons along that. So the organism that I study is called multicellular magnetotactic bacteria, or MMB for short, because I just don't want to say that the whole talk. And so this is what they look like where we have a TEM image showing uh, where these cells are grouped together in this kind of soccer ball shape or football shape. Um, and then here in the lower half, just an SEM showing you what that structure looks like. So I built a cartoon kind of showing um, what this ultra structure looks like. And one of the things I want to point out that pertains to the name is this magnetotaxis. And so they make these uh, organelles inside the cells called magnetosomes, where they synthesize a or ferromagnetic mineral that allows them to sense Earth's geomagnetic poles. And then they can taxi in the water column or the sediment column. Um, they also have these uh, carbon or energy storage granules inside them, this acellular center. So it's just one layer of cells uh, surrounding this acellular center. And then these actin-like filaments that seem to have some, something to do with their structure and morphology. Um, I've referred to them as obligate multicellular organisms. And this is rare in bacteria. In fact, the only example where the hypothesized life cycle is that they grow in size and then the entire consortia divides. And so we don't typically see this in uh, bacteria, where typically we see this, this facultative multicellularity. So they can be uh, multicellular, but they can also exist as a single cell. And that's true for all the examples I showed you with the tree life. So here's just an image of uh, one of the MMB from my sample site and kind of what we think it looks like uh, MMB dividing into possibly three. I also mentioned, moment of truth, if the video works, um, uh, that they're magnetotactic. Oh, let me see if I can get this to work. No, now I'm just hitting buttons. Okay, cool. So what we have here is a, uh, a tube with the MMB in the bottom of it and then a magnetic stir bar next to it. And if you just watch it, you can see them swim up out of the bottom of that tube and they taxi towards the the stir bar. Um, these ones are going towards the magnetic north. Here in the, on the right is a hanging water droplet just on a, a cover slip and there's a magnet uh, to the right and then what I've done is just move that magnet, turn it around and they start taxiing the, in the opposite direction. So that's uh, just showing their magnetotaxis. Um, it helps when we think of multicellularity to have some criteria for what that is and so just a list of these would be built from several cells of the same species, uh, specific shape and organization, and synchronized growth, so that excludes things like cancer. Uh, no competition between the cells, uh, coordinated behavior and response to external or internal stimuli, existence of cell-to-cell -cell signaling, and then this last one that's kind of like the catch-all 
metabolic differentiation or a division of labor. So with my organism, they fit these first four and these second, the last two are what we're kind of looking into. Um, one of the things we found with our project was that the, these MMB are not actually clonal. Um, and how we did this was we sorted whole consortia, did multiple displacement amplification, so we amplified their entire genome and sequenced that. And we were able to map reads to the longest read, the best assembly there, and look at these single nucleotide polymorphism differences. And what we found was that they have compared to controls, which is a pseudomonas control, as well as other environmental cohorts, they have this much higher um, uh, single nucleotide polymorphism rate than, than what we see with other organisms, which was kind of a surprise and we're still scratching our heads about this. Um, and that equates to 20 to 100 nucleotide polymorphisms in the genome. And their genomes are about eight megabases, which is about double that of E. coli. Another thing that we looked into was this metabolic differentiation or this division of labor. And this was done by doing stable isotope incubations where we incubated them in the presence of these 13C or deut deuterium oxide um, chemicals. And then we use a, a nano secondary ion mass spectroscopy to look at those and map that back where we found in the lower left where it's the 13C image differences in the use of that substrate, indicating this division of labor that we uh, suspected. So with that, just to kind of give conclusions and takeaways, um, the MMB are the only known obligate multicellular bacteria that we know of yet. Um, they are not clonal and do not conform to these canonical ideas of what multicellular, multicellularity is, where we typically have this clonal development from where one cell divides into daughter cells that stick together, or this aggregative uh, multicellularity. And they seem to fall somewhere in the middle there. They also engage in a division of labor as we were looking at with the uh, metabolic differentiation. And then of course, just to thank the lab and all the collaborators that help us with that. Thank you.